spectacular afternoon of basketball here on ABC. Mike Greenberg, Stephen A. Smith, Jalen Rose. And so the Warriors even this up. And you said to me as they were getting set to bring it to us exactly what Mark Jones said, which is this series seems to have seven games written all over it. And the reason why I feel that way is because the Sacramento Kings could have easily gone away. They didn't. They stayed in it. And De'Aaron Fox missed the clutch himself. Big time three. I don't understand how a reigning defending champion has a technical called against them because you didn't have a timeout left and you called a timeout. I don't, I don't, that's an explanation that I'll need another day. But at the end of the day, Steph Curry's greatness came shining through. Klay Thompson made his contribution. Jordan Poole made his contribution. Defensive lapses at times by the Golden State Warriors, but they were able to pull it out. An exciting game, an explosive game, great shot making by Steph Curry. And so many times he gets called the greatest shooter of all time. And young people want to mimic what he does, and they walk into a gym and think it's just shooting from a distance. No, he shoots off the ball and makes shots. He makes shots when he's open. He makes shots when they're contested. He makes shots finishing at the hoop with his left and his right. His shot making is literally what kept them in the game and allowed Klay Thompson to pick and choose his spots, Jordan Poole to pick and choose his spots. But also, everything Steph was offensively, Draymond was defensive. There were so many plays in the fourth quarter. Sacramento Kings had a chance in fast break situations. They turned up. Uh, Sabonis was dribble driving, get ripped by Draymond. Another time, hit Draymond in the head. Draymond gets a couple of blocks on Sabonis. He's also guarding De'Aaron Fox after starting the second half when he came off the bench in the first half. And also dribble handoffs to Steph Curry. Draymond was shooting poor, but defensively he was awesome. Well, let's not take anything away from Klay Thompson. He, he finished with 26 in this game, 9 of 15 shooting, 4 of 9 from three-point range. He made sure his presence was felt. We've got to give him some love. But i got to give some love to the Sacramento Kings in this regard. You're down to, you're up 2-0. Obviously, you lost game three. You come out here in game four. You know, you've got a deficit. You come storming back. De'Aaron Fox answers the call. And then you look at a guy like Keegan Murray who's going to be on the all-rookie team. He made a contribution. Malik Monk comes off the bench. He makes a contribution. They can score on anybody, and we saw that tonight. And let's talk about De'Aaron Fox a little more for a moment, Chandler. I think it is possible that more of the fans saw him play at Kentucky in the one year he did than have seen him play in the NBA. He's been a very good player coming in this direction for some time, but this has been his coming out party. He's becoming an NBA superstar in this series. Uber fast and quick, can drive both hands, can make three-point shots, plays mid-range, can finish at the hoop, will dunk on you if you're not paying attention. Locked down defensively also, Greeny. He's not just a one-way player. He also plays defense. But late, I'm telling you, for the Kings, this is the one that got away. Yep. Those couple of three-pointers that Harrison Barnes missed in particular late in the game, he's going to be kicking himself for missing those shots. And Sabonis offensively is almost becoming a liability in a lot of ways. he got to find a way to be a lot more aggressive and even take that little shot in the lane. So, Stephen A., we know that the Golden State Warriors struggled mightily on the road all season long. They're going to have to win one of two in Sacramento to have a chance to put this series, to win this series, be it in Game 5 or Game 7. Do I, you expect them to do it? I picked them to win this series in seven games, although I will concede that I think they should do everything they possibly can to get a Game 5. Why? Because now the pressure is on the Sacramento Kings. Their youth comes into play. Yeah, they were up 2-0. Now it's tied 2-2. You go back to Sacramento, you've got to embrace the specter of potentially coming back down 3-2 to the reigning defending NBA champions on their home turf. That is not a predicament that you want to be in if you're a young team that may not get the necessary superstar calls that we all suspect the Steph Curry and a Klay Thompson would get. So because of that, you want to do everything you can to sit up there and make sure you ensure that you win game five. Golden State knows that they go for the jugular because they're playing with house money. Right? Even though the Warriors have a championship pedigree, they made some crazy plays down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Steph called that timeout when they didn't have one. And also, they could have ran the clock down more. Steph took that shot at the free throw line with 10 seconds. He misses that shot, which gives the Kings an opportunity to actually go win the game. That's what we would have been talking about had Harrison Barnes made that shot at the end. Instead, it's a classic, and we have ourselves a two-all series here. Meanwhile, in our earlier game on ABC from the Garden, so just uptown from where we are broadcasting from today, the New York Knicks. Warriors winning game four to even the series.
Jalen, take us through it then. His impact on the floor and the significance of this as the Warriors, to some degree at least, it feels like, are playing for their season. Draymond is a winner. He's a champion, and he's going to respond. And the one thing about his game that's underrated is being a playmaker. He's led that team in assists. He's a guy that's going to do a lot of dribble handoffs. He's the emotional and psychological pulse of the team. And getting him back into the lineup, you need that guy on the team. Trust me. Every team... Once a guy like that on their squad, every fan base and every opponent hates that guy. <laughs> we can go back to the history of time. Bill Lambeer of my Pistons, Dennis Rodman. We see in a guy like Dylan Brooks try to become that guy and elevate to that level. Meta World Peace is always that guy initially that plays defense and does all of the things with set light up the scoreboard that makes a team go. Draymond Green is going to respond in a big way today. The Golden State Warriors is going to win on their home. We will have news on Dylan Brooks coming up in just a couple of quick minutes. Stephen A., I thought I heard you start to say you do expect the Warriors to win today. Without question. They better win, and I believe they will win. I've got the Warriors winning this series in seven games. That does not happen if they lose game four today and fall 3-1. This could be over in five. They know it. We all know it. They've got to win game four today, and I believe they will. Well, teams that fall 3-1 down in a best-of-seven series historically only come back to win 5% of the time. So, is that what's at stake today, Michael Wilbon? Is the season at stake for the Warriors today? Absolutely. Um, we saw how Sacramento played at home. Now, is there a chance that the Warriors, even with their awful road record, could go back up the road 90 miles to Sacramento and win game five and bring it back. Yes, because they're the champions, not just defending champions, but of course, four time champions, as we say repeatedly. So but still, they have to approach it, Greeny, um, as if the season is at stake. I think they are. You heard Steph Curry talk about not being able to go down 3-0. You can't go down 3-1 either. So for all of intents and purposes, today, yes, is their season. It's on the so, line. So what is at stake in our late game today? Everything. In the meantime, we'll get to our early game coming up here in just a matter of moments. The Knicks and the Cavs getting set to go at it. As I said, it was rainy this morning. The this is how it started before game three for one Dylan Babylon Brooks. On the heels of the latest edition of his trash talk, here's how it would end for Brooks. Third quarter, going below grade on Bronny, LeBron James rather, would lead to a flagrant two which led to Brooks' ejection. And Dave McMenamin, he was there for it all. LeBron James confronted Dylan Brooks on the court before Saturday's Game 3 between the Lakers and Grizzlies for all to see. It was very, very public, James said, after the Lakers win to go up 2-1. Just the way I like it. He didn't share exactly what he told Brooks, but the message was clear. Your trash talk doesn't work on me. I'm just here to win. I didn't make it me. What type of statement I made? Nah, I've been doing this too long. I don't, I'm, I'm making no statements. At the end of the day, you know, I think my resume and what I've done for this league and, and uh, as, you know, certain individuals, it's easy. It's literally easy. If you want to, we won tonight. Let me not start. I don't want to start this. Tristan Thompson told me before the game that Brooks's tactics were right out of the Deshaun Stevenson or Joakim Noah agitator handbook. If LeBron has a bad game, Brooks can take the credit. If LeBron plays well, he's supposed to because he's LeBron. If Brooks wanted attention, he got it. What LeBron wanted, as always, was to win. And he let his play expose Brooks in a way that was far more effective than a war of words would be anyway. In Los Angeles, Dave McMenamin, ESPN. MAC-10, much appreciated. Here's a look at the lines for today's NBA slate. The Knicks, small favorites at home, while the Dubs and the Celtics, gigantic favorites. Denver, looking to sweep. They're a road favorite. As we welcome in one of our favorites, Aaron Kate Dolan, here to sort through some of the best bets on today's NBA slate. 3.30 Eastern, it's the Dubs hosting the Kings. Aaron, what do you like in that game? I'm looking at the Kings team total over 114 and a half. Now they hit over the